In this demonstration, we're going to look at how we can control the network permissions or the network access to a file share, in particular when that file share is used to back a read write many persistent volume for Kubernetes. And that persistent volume, of course, is built on top of the SandFox service. Now, if we look at an example here, um, we have a, a couple of file shares, but in one in particular is a container file volume, which is already backing a read write many uh, volume on Kubernetes. And if we look at the network access control, we allow access from any IP. So what we want to do is we want to show you how you can change this network access control. And that is done by modifying the csi-vsphere.conf file that resides on the Kubernetes control plane. And so we're going to pop on to one of the control plane nodes in this Kubernetes cluster to show you how to change that next. Okay, so here we are on the control plane node and we're in the folder slash etc Kubernetes. And this is where you would typically find your csi-vsphere.conf file, which controls the CSI driver and thus also controls the network permissions for vSAN file shares. Now I have a couple of different uh, demos in here, or a couple of different examples of that file. Um, I just wanted to show you the part that was persistent to setting the network permissions. And this is this file here. Now this isn't the actual file name that you would use. You would use the csi-vsphere.conf, but this is just a sample or an example of what it might look like. As you can see, I've um, blanked out some of the, the octets in the, uh, the address ranges that I'm using. I've also blanked out the password. Of course, in the, um, the actual csi.conf file, you would have the real password. But this is the section that I really wanted to show you here. Again, I've blocked out the two first octets of the IP address range, but what this is actually stating or what this is actually configuring is that if you mount this data store from VLAN 51, in other words, the IP address range represented by that, uh, that range or that subnet there, 51-0 or dot zero, uh, you would only have read-only access. And similarly for VLAN 62, any IP addresses that are mounting this file share from that address range would also only have read-only access. So those are the pertinent parts of the net permissions that you would have to add to the uh, csi.conf file that would enable you to, uh, to control who can access this particular, uh, this particular file share or the file share, any file share indeed, that is created uh, through vSAN file services. Now the vSphere or the csi-vsphere.conf uh, configuration is actually held in a secret. So in order to update that Kubernetes secret, what you would have to do is delete the current secret. So we'll do a sudo here, just in case I don't have permissions. And I'm going to delete the secret, which is vSphere config secret. And it resides in the namespace uh, kube system. Okay. So that's deleted, and now I'm going to recreate that secret with an updated CSI vSphere conf file. And so now we can create the new secret. And you can see it's creating a generic secret from the file csi-vsphere.conf, and we're creating it in the namespace kube system. All right, so that is the secret created. So now what we can do is we can drop back and we can see if we can create a new persistent volume and we'll have a look at the network access control associated with this new volume that we created. Okay, so here we are back in an environment where I can try and build an application that uses a read write many, a persistent volume. And now when we create that volume, we'll be able to have a look and see what network access permissions are associated with it. Now, if I look at the storage class, storage class is already in place. Uh, and that comes from this storage class file here, which has a reference to a policy name. Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that volume on whatever storage or matches that policy on the vSphere backend. Excellent. And now I have another manifest file, which includes both the PVC, the persistent volume claim, and the pod information. 
and you can see this persistent volume claim is requesting that we create a file share or size 3 gig of type read write many meaning that it's accessible to multiple pods and here are two the pods some very simple um, commands included in the pods just to do something and in this case they're just going to echo some text into a um, file share or a file on the file share so there we go so let's go ahead and uh, apply that excellent so let's see the pvc the persistent volume claim the pv and the pod okay so we do have the pods coming up here and the persistent volume claim is currently pending and we don't have the new persistent volume yet as you can see there was still already some some objects created on this cluster but let's have a look once more and, and that's a little bit better now we can see that the persistent volume claim is bound we also have the storage class and the pods are creating their containers okay so now the last step is to go back onto the vSphere client and see what's happened to that particular volume and so here we are back on our vSphere client and we should see a new container volume created see which one it is so we can examine the details and this one or this is only of size one gigs and it allows access from any IP so it's not this one it must be this one that we just created which is as a size three gig and now you can see that the network access control is exactly like the CSI vSphere.conf request and that is his read-only permissions on those subnets so that completes the demonstration.